Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make an awesome title screen in Scratch. This screen will have nice buttons, a little logo, and a transition into the game. Let's just get right into this video. So right now I just have a sprite for my player, and I can use WASD to move around the screen. And this is the movement script right here. Then I have a sprite for the title screen. This has a costume called Game Logo, which is the logo. Then I have one called Start, and this is the Start button. As you can see here, it's kind of hard to see. Then I have one for the hitbox version of it and this is what you'll actually hover over. As you can see here this is exactly the same size except it's just a box. Then I have settings and then the hitbox for the settings. I have credits and then the hitbox for the credits. I have background which is the background of the title screen. Then I have these little message of the day things which as you can see here are kind of like anchored to the left or whatever. So the first thing we need to do to make this title screen work is make it to where instead of this movement running on green flag we need to make it to where it runs on a when I receive message so we can kind of split it up. So to do this, let's go ahead and add a when I receive new message called start game like this. Now you want to go ahead and put all of this code in here and then put a hide in the wing green fight click. So this will make it hide when the game starts and then if we pull out a broadcast start game and we click on this block you can see that look at this our cat moves around. So now that we have it separated we can make the title screen pop up in the beginning. So in the title screen add a wing green fight clicked and then a hide. This will get rid of the initial sprite. Then we want to go ahead and make a custom block called create clones like this and check on run screen without refresh and run that after here. This will make the clones pop up for the buttons. Now to actually separate the different clones out we need a variable to keep track of their ID. So make a for the sprite only variable called ID and then set that to all the different costumes. Make sure they match the costume name. So let's start with the game logo. So you can just copy that in here and then do a create clone of myself. Copy that and then do start and just go down the line. You don't have to do the start hitbox, so just go to settings, so do settings and create clone, then do credits. These are the buttons, by the way. Next up, we have background, then we just have message of the day, and you don't have to do any of the other messages of the days be days because it'll automatically do that. Okay, so now this won't actually do anything because the clones are hidden. So let's make all the clones pop up. So let's start by doing a switch costume to ID. This will set up the costumes, right? That's why it's important to have the ID match the costumes. Then you want to show and go to front and then go to zero, zero, which is the middle of the screen. So if we click the green flag, you can see that there are all the different elements kind of just scattered throughout and the buttons are hidden in here. They're hard to see though. Now let's make them go to the right layers and all that stuff. So put an if else in here and check if the ID is equal to game logo. Then we want to go ahead and set the Y to 90. So this is up towards the top of the screen. Then you want to duplicate this and check if the ID is equal to start, which is the first button. Then we need a variable to keep track of the top button Y position. So make a for all sprite variable called buttons top Y. It's kind of a weird name, whatever. Go ahead and set that in the very beginning before the create clones to negative 50, which is kind of like right here-ish. Now you want to set Y to buttons top Y, duplicate this, and then check if the ID is equal to the settings. Then you want to go to the buttons Y minus 30, which is a little bit below it for the settings button, then duplicate that and change this to credits. This is the final button, oops, and then subtract twice that, which is 60. Now duplicate this and then check if it's the background. If it is the background, then we want to go to the very back. So just do go to back here. And then last but not least, the very last one is the message of the day like so. And we can just do go to front and then go backwards five layers. So it's a little bit behind like the logo and all that stuff. So as you can see here, when I start up this game, here we go, everything pops in. The buttons are all in order. There's the logo in the middle or title, whatever. And then the message of the day is not in the correct position. So let's position that really quick. All you need to do is do a go to negative 194 45. So now you can see that there we go, it's right there. And this is the layout of our title screen. You can see now that I can actually change this button's top Y and it'll change all the buttons. So if I do zero, the start button will be at zero and then all of them will move accordingly. So you can play around with that and put it wherever you'd like. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and make the buttons work. So make a custom block called button tick 
like so and click OK and then put a forever loop inside the start and run the button tick. Duplicate that, put that in the settings and the credits. Now to detect if we are touching it or not, go ahead and switch costume to the ID. So if it's the start, it will switch costume to the start and then so on. Now to make it switch costume to the hitbox version, we want to join the ID with underscore hitbox so that'll say okay my id is sprite now i'm gonna join the hitbox and it's this one that way we can detect if we're touching so now make a variable to store if we're touching called touching mouse like this for the sprite only and now set the touching mouse to the touching mouse pointer now after we're done with that we can switch back to the id variable okay so you can see if we start this nothing changes except for this guy so that is okay for now now let's make it kind of move to the right when we hover over it change x by a times with 0.2 that's the smoothness amount now put a minus in the left and then do x position in the right and now what we want to do is just put the touching mouse variable times 5 so if we're not touching the mouse it'll be 0 which 0 times 5 is 0 so it'll just set its x to 0 but if we are touching it it'll set it to 5 so it'll move over slightly so you can see now if we hover over them there we go they move to the right and it's nice looking now let me show you really quick if we take out this switch costume to the hitbox you can see what i was trying to describe earlier with the weird movement you can see that once it hovers over it it'll move but the thing will move away from it so it'll go back and then it'll just get in a loop and it'll look really really bad and it gets in like this weird movement jitteriness so that's why we use the hitbox so now let's make it slightly transparent when we're not hovering over it, and then not transparent when we are hovering over it touching mouse equals false so this means we are not touching it then we want to take that times 20. okay now if we put that in here you can see that right now it is slightly transparent transparent and when we hover over it there we go it gets less transparent we can exaggerate this effect by setting it to like 50 you can see it's very very dim now if we hover over it there we go it gets lighter so you can set that to whatever you want i think 20 looks pretty good now we want to do the actual clicking stuff so go ahead and check if the touching mouse is equal to true right here then you can go ahead and put an and in here the mouse is down so this means we click on the button then we want to go ahead and wait until not mouse down this will prevent any weird bugs because otherwise it'll try to run every frame we are clicking now we want to check the ids so duplicate all of this and then get rid of everything from the credits and then clear out everything in here so if it is equal to the start then we can just broadcast that start game and wait and this will just run whenever you click on the button but in this video i'm not going to do anything for the settings and credits you can of course do whatever you want okay so now you can see that we can hover over these nice buttons if i click on the settings and credits they don't do anything but if i click on start there we go it starts the game and look at that my cat pops in and we can move around now now we need to get rid of the title screen when we start the game so add a when i receive start game in here and then do an if else in here and check if the id is equal to the game logo then we want to go ahead and stop other scripts and sprite because later on it has some animation stuff that needs to be stopped here then we want to repeat 30 here duplicate this chunk of code and just change this stuff to a y y position and y then do zero so it moves to the middle of the screen then let's make it get a little bit darker so change the brightness effect by negative four like so lastly we want to repeat 25 times change the ghost effect by four so this will make it fade out now duplicate this once again and check if the id is equal to message of the day and go ahead and remove all this stuff and change this to a 20 then change the ghost effect by five as well as changing the brightness effect by five and then in the else just do change ghost effect by five now to save performance and clones at the very end hide and then delete this clone so you can see if i click start look at that the logo moves down and the game starts now let's make the message of the day work so switch costume to join the id variable with pick random one to four so now if we start the game you can see that that gets cycled each time so it just picks a random one now we could stop right here but if you know me i like to make my games and stuff polished so let's go ahead and do that first let's make the game logo kind of animate in so set the size here to 80 percent then we want to forever change the size by 100 minus size which will just make it smoothly go there then to make this smooth we want to take that times zero 
0.2. So this will actually interpolate between the sizes. Now we want to make the Y position change depending on where the mouse position is. So it kind of gives it a parallaxing effect. So duplicate all of this and change this to a Y here in a change Y. Then you want to add a plus 90 in here. So this will make its base position 90. Then you want to add a divided by here and put the mouse Y divided by 45 then plus 90. So this will make it base position 90 and then also add on to that a little bit of the mouse position. Lastly, we want to set the X to the mouse X divided by 45. So it moves a little bit. Okay, so you can see now that when in the beginning, it slowly kind of like grows. And then when we move our mouse, it kind of parallaxes. So now let's skip down to the message of the day and make that animate as well. Okay, so instead of making it immediately go to the position, let's make it smoothly go there. So change this to a negative 175 and then 64. Then forever, we want to change the X by, you can scroll all the way up here and duplicate all of this because it's a very similar script. Change this to a mouse X, change this to a divided by 100, then plus negative 194, or you could just do minus positive 194, then subtract off the X position and then do 0 0.3. This will make it kind of parallax and smoothly move with the X. Now let's do the same for the Y. So just change this to a Y and then mouse Y, then add on to this. Make sure it's an add now. 45 minus its current y position like this take that times 0 0.2 too. So in the beginning, you can see it kind of like plops in. I don't know what the word is, but it looks cool and stuff. So yeah, now let's make it cooler by rotating a little bit. So in the beginning, point direction 75 here. And now we just want to turn by duplicate all of this and then take out this part and then just do 90 minus the direction input times 0 0.2. And now you can see that it starts rotated like that and it kind of just falls in and it looks awesome and lastly let's make it also do that with the size so set the size to 70 here and then change the size by duplicate all of this change this to 100 change the direction to a size input and then do 0 0.3 that'll make it kind of lerp to it so now you can see with all those effects it looks really really nice we can hover over these buttons click start fades out and boom the game starts and you know what in the if game logo in the when i receive start game i think i like it without the brightness effect so i'm gonna take that out and you can see now that i can hover over this i click start boom it fades out then i can move around as this cat thank you all so much for watching if you did enjoy this video make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing but anyway this has been owen and i am out that's one polished classy smooth cat